Yo, what's up, peeps? Subdesto here, and I'm bringing you 29 advanced Epic Sessions tips and tricks for you more sweaty players out there. I'm looking at you, aspiring bold wraith. I'm going to have a more general beginner slash intermediate tip video up as well soon. But for now, let's start with the stuff that actually blew my mind when I found out. So, let's go. You can redirect out of a gravity cannon with Newcastle's ultimate. This can actually save your life if you spot enemies on the other side. Not necessarily your teammate's life, but, you know, no sense in dying together. Newcastle's ultimate range is about 35 meters if you free use it and 70 meters if you use it on a teammate. But did you know that the range extends to 150 meters if you use it on a death box with a banner? You can actually target the death box from even further away, but from our testing you will only ever travel 150 meters before awkwardly hitting the ground. One thing to note is that you do need line of sight for this to work, so it's very situational and only works in the very open spaces in Apex. I believe I can fly. You can block the jump launch escape of these PvE armories by placing a trident on top of them. You kind of need a horizon or octane in most scenarios to get the car up there though. But it's pretty funny to see them hit their head. <laughs> you can track the exact location of any item in Luba's black market. All you have to do is open the black market, ping the item that you want, close the black market and then pretend you want to cancel your ping except that you now keep holding down the ping button. That way a white line will appear that leads straight to the item. As long as you keep holding down the ping button, the line will stay and you can walk to the item. This also works for everybody, not just for Luba. One counter to Gibby's bubble can be to wait roughly 11 seconds after the dome starts to throw an arc star on top of it. Time correctly, this will make the arc star drop and explode right when the bubble disappears. If you didn't see the start of the bubble, you can watch out for when the beam in the bubble starts to flicker. That means the bubble will disappear in 6 seconds. Count to 3, throw an arc star. Profit, baby. As Rampart, you can use change firing mode to instantly get your next ultimate charge up a little bit, depending on how many bullets you had left. You can do a perfectly vertical jump with octane jump pads by stopping the forward input right when you touch the jump pad, while also performing a melee attack. If you don't use any directional input, you will then be able to infinitely repeat the jump as you always land centered on the jump pad. Octane can do a crazy jump pad rotation underneath the map on Olympus even after they nerfed the jump pad distance in Season 10. Place a jump pad right here and slide jump onto it. Try to get max distance with your second jump. As long as you don't touch the fence, you're good. I feel like you probably saw that one before, but did you know that Ash can do this rotation with the ultimate too? And Valkyrie? And Pathfinder! Pathfinder and Octane actually feel like the hardest and most risky to hit. <laughs> While Ash, you sadly have to climb on the fence first, which makes this a little less useful. You can disable the field of view scaling when using Bloodhound's ultimate or Octane's stim in the settings. This will stop the game from increasing and decreasing your FOV from example from 110 to 120 back to 110, which can really mess up your aim if you're not super used to it. Almost every building in Skyhook and Fragment can be climbed by any legend if done right. You probably know about this one by now, which has multiple ways to be climbed. But did you know about this one? This one can be a little challenging. The trick is to keep facing the wall until you reach your highest climbing point and only then turn to your right. Or these ones in Skyhook? I might make a whole video about climbing routes and spots you can reach. If you're interested, let me know in the comments. But for now, I encourage you to see the map as your playground and try to get creative with your pathing. You can throw grenades and arcsters through doors by aiming at the corner with that little triangle opening. Move the indicator around until it disappears. That means the nade will go through to the other side. As you can imagine, this is a lot safer than kicking the door, even though it does sometimes take a moment until you get it just right. You can technically do this with thermites too, but I noticed that it often bugs out like this on single doors. And while it does work better on double doors, it's also easier for the enemy to avoid. One thing to notice that this will not work on a lot of doors on Stormpoint because they don't have a triangle opening at all. They're just built different, man. You can actually switch your weapon order while healing by opening your inventory and moving the weapon. This is great if you're in a pinch and your currently equipped weapon is empty as it will enable you to shoot and defend yourself right away as you basically skip the animation of switching your weapon. You can prepare for a fight by taking body shields out of death boxes for quicker armor swapping. This can be especially useful when bunkering up in a good endgame location or when you know you're about to fight a 1 vs 2 or 1 vs 3. 
Hey, hey, you, do you want to help me on a little quest to feed the algorithm monster of YouTube? Just, you know, write a little comment, a little... And maybe leave a like, subscribe for more cool stuff. I would really, really appreciate that. Okay, back to the video. If you have extra buttons on your mouse, you can bind them for an easier melee attack or for a quick shield cell without having to go through the menu. I'm using the G Pro Super Light, which comes with two good to reach side buttons, which I use for melee as well as the secondary crouch button. But really, anything that makes your react quicker in game works. Not all finishers are created equal. Some are actually significantly quicker than others and therefore technically pay to win. They differ between legends and between default and legendary options. If you want an in-depth video comparing all the different finishers, let me know. But yeah, this over two seconds difference between Horizon's default finisher and a legendary option from Valkyrie did surprise me. Horizon does have a legendary finisher that takes six seconds as well, which I would seriously consider unlocking if I was still maining Horizon now. Two seconds is a lot in game. Speaking of pay to win, there are pay to win weapon skins out there that give you a clearer iron sight, which makes it a little easier to track your enemies. Most notably, the Season 4 Battle Pass Flatline skin, as well as the Season 7 Battle Pass RN9 skins, even though the RN9 at least has a legendary option with good iron sights too. The Wingman also has a legendary option with better iron sights, as well as a couple event and battle pass skins that are better than the default too, even if most prefer the legendary option. The Peacekeeper also has a superior legendary variant. One that you probably didn't know, which is to be fair, very minimal, is the Golden Arrow Hemlock skin. It looks bulkier than the default at first, but it has several little holes that actually allow you to see the small movement changes from your enemy a little better compared to the default one. You can super jump on ziplines easily if you bind your jump to a scroll wheel. This takes zipline building pushes to a whole new level as you'll be able to hover in the air for a moment to shoot at an enemy rather than just ziplining into their face. You can use Pathfinder zipline in combination with super jumps to create a new way for you to peek. Imagine you are stuck on low ground and there are some enemies above you that you want to peek. Instead of slowly climbing up and exposing yourself, you can just do this. <laughs> you can put up rampart walls way quicker if your animation cancel by switching to your ultimate between walls. All you have to do is place the wall, switch to your ultimate and repeat. Jump master priority always goes to the furthest person on the right that has locked the legend in. This is important to know if you're trying to grind rank without a team, as you should be trying to become jump master every time to avoid hot drops as often as you can. You don't have to empty your whole mag into a flyer, you just shoot it once, wait until its wings flap three times, and then shoot the box. Easy peasy. If an enemy sticks you with an arc star, you can run towards the enemy to get him damaged by the explosion as well. This technique is generally considered quite rude though. You probably know that you can avoid the secondary Arkstar explosion after getting stuck as a Wraith by going into the Void with a Tactica. You can also avoid the explosion by going through a portal. And Ash can do the same thing with her ultimate. Just like with Wraith's ability, you will drop the Arkstar on the floor the moment you enter the Void. If Newcastle uses his tactical on a ledge, you can actually put a Gibraltar Dome Shield on top of the bottom curvature, which gives you a moving Dome Shield that Newcastle can control. Pretty dope. You can buy a gold, purple and blue weapon with crafting materials in Big Mod on World's Edge, which all have a 25% faster reload as well as purely cosmetic paintball effects. The reload speed is actually pretty insane and I mean the paintballs are pretty cool. If you don't see the paintball splashes on the wall, you just have to enable impact marks in the settings. By the way, you can actually steal one of these weapons with Loba's Black Market, which will trigger an alarm and destroy the market, just as it does when stealing from vaults. This does make this an incredible landing location for Loba's though, as you can basically guarantee yourself two golden weapons every game. Skynading or vertnading is an incredible powerful tool that can create you an opening or win you the fight outright. Oh, go, go, go. If done correctly, it will leave your enemies zero time to react to your nade. The more often you try this, the more precise you will get. You can even practice skynading in the firing range. Don't sleep on grenades. Let's end with the most important tip that I give everybody who wants to improve at Apex Legends. Cue the inspirational music. Take a moment and really think about what you could have done better after every game you play. Don't blame it on your teammates, that's something you can't control. Even if it's just something small, if you try to learn something from every game, maybe even write it down, you'll see a lot of growth in your gameplay. If you play with this mindset, you will improve much faster and also much more efficient compared to just mindlessly spamming one game after the other. And that's it. These are 29 Apex Legends tips and tricks to give that fleshy organ in your skull something to chew on. I hope you learned something new. If you did or if you enjoyed the vibe, please consider subscribing. I mean, you're still around. I'm just saying. Maybe write a comment and send my TikTok to your grandma and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.